Welcome to the Look Good, Move Well podcast. Okay, welcome, welcome to welcome back to the to the airwaves of functional bodybuilding. Yay! I feel like I don't have this in the right spot. Here we go, microphone. Um, all right, Satya. Yes. Are you ready for the Are you ready for the haiku challenge? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now I want to read you something. Okay. Okay. Everybody, listen up. I'm specifically speaking to you, whoever's listening. Functional bodybuilding is a training philosophy that emphasizes functional movement patterns, muscle balance, and overall physical conditioning to improve overall physical function and performance. Our mission is to empower individuals to achieve their physical goals through safe, effective, and enjoyable training programs that prioritize functional movement, strength, and overall physical conditioning. We believe that functional bodybuilding is a holistic approach to physical fitness that can o- improve overall health, reduce the risk of injury, and enhance athletic performance. Our goal is to help people of all levels and abilities achieve their full potential through functional bodybuilding. Did I write that? Did you? That's the question of the day. <laughs> And no, 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 you did not write that. An AI chatbot wrote that. Our robot overlord wrote that. Our robot overlord <laughs> responded to write a mission statement for functional bodybuilding, which is interesting because it must go to what I wrote, what you've written and pull, pull things from that and then just compile it. Yeah. Because like there's, there's clearly things there's like a, a redundancy of like getting people physical conditioning and performance, right. which we, we would clean up, but there's some good stuff in here. But I the mean, good stuff is stuff that I wrote. <laughs> totally. Totally. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not, but it's like, I don't know. I'm, I'm, hey, the, the, this was not a, uh, this, this is more of a, the reason there's a decent functional bodybuilding mission statement written out of this is, uh, because we have we have great copy out there in the world that explains what we do. Yeah. Thanks to Satya. Yeah. <laughs> Man, my 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 men's group that I just spent the, the weekend with in Austin is going crazy with this ch- chatbot right now. Just, this one, he just <laughs> write a rap bout. Write a rap bout Ben, Marcus, <laughs> and Ryan in Shakespearean language. <laughs> verily, verily, let me tell a tale of three men, Ben, Marcus, and Ryan, whose strength and might doth never fail. <laughs> oh. Their muscles flex, their weights they carry on. Mm. All right, I won't finish that out, but <laughs> I'm sure this is uh, probably going to be more interesting to me than TikTok. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but you know what our robot overlord can't do because... I experimented with chat GPT this week when I was writing our email newsletter and I wanted, I'm trying to work on more storytelling in our newsletters and in our marketing. So I wanted to open with a very visceral story about Marcus injuring his back on the leg press. And so I asked our robot overlord what it felt like to injure your back on a leg press. And it was like, I'm just a robot. I'm just a machine. (laughs) I don't really have physical sensations. So I had to take that one to the source wonderful yeah you know what's interesting um speaking of leg press i did i definitely i I always had a hunch that like the leg press was something that really threw me like threw my back over the edge when i had the experience in college um and we have a leg press here at the gym now we have it's a pivot press it's similar to a leg press it's slightly different made by atlanta strength and you know the first time i the first time I li- I used it, and since then, when I've gone particularly heavy and hard, I feel like it, it's not my optimal position. Mm. I got to be thoughtful about how to use it. So yeah, um, but it also tells me because I I can feel some of those like similar mm-hmm. low back kind of SI joint area like funkiness mm-hmm. from doing it, and um, yeah, I think it's I have. I think it's like tips me off to the fact that I could use that as like a, a physical indicator and a progression, um, checkpoint to see how I'm, how my glutes and my hamstrings and adductors are like 
what the what my mobility is because I, I think it just kind of pulls me in a, in a weird position yeah because i like to go through the full range of motion on it right. but like because it feels safe you're like back is supported but like mm-hmm. i get low like my pelvis starts to I roll around see that. yeah anyway. well that's good to know Something. good athlete awareness yep mm-hmm. um anything else that you'd like to banter about before we dive into something i'm ready for the topic okay then tell me what is the topic okay we have... actually tell everybody don't just tell me okay we have a we have a big announcement okay <laughs> okay and it's not digital trading cards of marcus as a superhero <laughs> no <laughs> it Nate's, is in Nate's fact <laughs> y'all, y'all, I, 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 oh by the way i think my sweet potatoes just hit about the 12 minute mark downstairs <laughs> They just hit. It just hit. Just it just hit. hit everything's this, hitting. Everything's hitting right now. The sweet potato smell is just filling the gym. Oh yeah, it it's smelling good. That with a hot dog might be the best thing right now <laughs> possible. <laughs> okay, big announcement, everybody. Okay, big announcement. So we have been providing our persist training program, and in fact, all of our training programs that aren't eBooks on a training platform called True Coach for a number of years now. We've been doing this since before I came on the individual coaching program and with Awaken Training Series. And then when we started Persist, we started delivering it through this program. Mm -hmm. And we are now moving Persist from True Coach to a new training platform called Atom, E-T-O-M, Atom. And we're super pumped. So we wanted to give you all the backstory of how that came to be and uh, and what's what's ahead for us. I just want to say that Satya's super pumped voice might not be like really coming through, <laughs> <laughs> but that is as excited as Satya ever gets right there. Unless she gets like a PR snatcher or muscle up, yeah. that's that's the maximum this is pumped like, voice that we get out of Satya. So should I, should I redo it? Things were vibrating in this room right now. You guys aren't feeling it on the other end of this, but she was she was like shaking and like you know slamming barbells over here. Um, yeah, we're super pumped. Well, how would you say that? How would I say? Oh, no, I, I'm not. I'm not. I just don't want it to be misrepresented because that is like you know. Okay. Like when you see someone do like a 95 pound back squat PR, you might be like, oh, it's just 95 pounds. But it's like, no, that person just went full, you know, uh-huh. strong, strong man on that. <laughs> and you just went full excitement. It's just, it's just like, it was, a ha- there. It was like, just, a ha- it's yeah. Just believe us. It's just not like Anthony level, maybe, you know, no. exuberance that that's you might. That's not exp- my personality. I know. That's why I'm just. That's why of, you're filling in the people. Yeah. Okay. It's like I'm narrating the thing okay. right now. Okay. So great. anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Good episode. Right on. <laughs> no, just <laughs> Okay. Well, I want well, let's let me let, let's let me back up and back just up, say back up. Let me just say, look. In 2014, I was coaching people online. And it was in the era of like no training technology, software technology. There, there was not like a fitness platform where you could do fitness training. People weren't doing that. And so the way we solved that problem was we gave people emails where mm-hmm. they got their workouts. Then there were like Google Sheets and Google, you know, Google Spreadsheets that kind of were coming out and was like, okay, I could write the Google Spreadsheet program. Mm-hmm. I could share it with my client and then they could look at it. But then clients would like erase stuff. And so it was like, okay, I got to make the spreadsheet to write the program, copy and paste it over here. Then they have to like email me the results. And, you know, it was, it was clunky for uh-huh, sure. Uh-huh. So we solved that problem with a number of training platforms out there. The, the one that we moved to was True Coach. Yeah. And True Coach was great for, for many years. It still has a great, uh, features to it it's just that it was designed for me to coach satya one-to-one it wasn't designed for me to coach satya and you know hundreds if not thousands of other people who want to follow a community-based program so we've just been using it for three to five years now for that purpose um for the group training program purpose and it's worked but it it hasn't been able to meet all of our needs and our customers have felt it at times. They said, "Hey, this. What about this? What about that?" And it's like, "Ah, oh, we we can't we can't navigate that." Mm-hmm. So we've been on the search for a a software solution, and there's a lot of them out there. There's a lot of platforms that use you know 
uh, now, you know, online training has, is bigger than ever, right? Spe- especially after 2020 and the pandemic and people not training in group facilities and at gyms, like they needed a way to interact with coaches and training platforms and programs. And so there's a lot of things and a lot of options. And we have certainly been uh, approached by, I don't know, 20, Many. 30, yeah. you know, lots of different ones out there. Yeah. Um, some of our competitors, some of our friends, some of our, you know, people we admire in the space, they use a lot of different things. And one of the things that we kept holding out for was, look, whatever we see out there, whatever training software platform there is, there's not a single one that's perfect. Yeah. And that would be kind of, I don't know, that would be unfair to like put on to a company and be like, hey, you know, this has to be perfect for us because if it's perfect for us, it's not going to be perfect for the next person. So we were always hesitant to jump into anything because we're like, well, true coach isn't perfect, but it's good. You know, this isn't perfect, but it's good. Like, what do, what do we do? Where do we go? And the thing that meant so much to us was we want to be in partnership with whatever provider of software and technology we work with so that we become involved in the process of creation. Mm-hmm. And the the alternative was like, oh, let's go build our own thing. Mm-hmm. But people think that's such an easy thing to do. No, no, no. We've been asked, hey, you want to build your own thing? And it's like, we know people who have spent, I'm just going to throw out like some crazy numbers. They spent millions of dollars to build an app that works just for their specific audience. And then once it's built, it's still not perfect. And they have to maintain it for another 50 to $75,000 a month in perpetuity, as long as it's going to be their thing. So it's, it's not just a money thing. It's a responsibility. And it's also knowing your core competency. Like we're not a software company. Why would we think we're going to be the best at building something? Mm -hmm. So we have chosen not to build but to, f- you know, hold out until we find the right group of people who we align with, we believe in, they know what we're about, they want to actually grow with us. And growth with us means constantly improving and innovating in the technology space. So we're switching to a platform which we believe and feel confident and we've already tested it with a number of people. Like it is an improvement in the group experience from what we've done in the past. And it's just the beginning, yeah. which is like, to me, what makes it super exciting. Yeah. And if you're listening to this and you've ever been on a training app and you've been frustrated because it didn't do this or didn't do that, you know what I'm talking about? Like, you know, you want that to, it, it, it's important. It's important how you interact with the training that you see on your phone or on your laptop or, you know, on your iPad, when you go to the gym and how you receive the information and the education and the how to. And anyway, this is why it's such a, a an important moment for us. Like we set out in 2022 with a goal to, not fix and solve, but to like make a big step forward in this area of, of what we do, which is software delivery of our, you know, one to many program. And I had to remind Satya and, and Cliff about this the other day. It was like, well, you know, what was our 2022 goal? Like, cause we're thinking about 2023 goals yeah. and objectives and themes. Like, what are we going to do as a company? And like, well, what did we do in 2022? Like, would we even like, succeed in anything i was like well one of the big ones was this thing that is literally you know today as you know as we're recording this we're like signing the contracts to get it you know and and initiating this new move so it's kind of coming to fruition and um yeah we're we're pumped we're vibrating on a Mm -hmm. high frequency um and i'm not i haven't even been caffeinated in the last couple hours so this is This is real. This is as real as it gets. This is real pump. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and what this comes back to also is that one of the things that we set out to do in 2022 was really dig into what is holding people back from having an even better training experience than we know we could provide for them. Mm -hmm. Is it that they are unclear on some things? Is it this obstacle, that obstacle? Like what is really going to help people have a more seamless, enjoyable, consistent training experience to take with them into the new year, especially. So uh, we really did some 
deep customer research, as we've alluded to before on this podcast. And now we've been able to take those learnings and put them into our new uh, development program with Adam and our new training platform so that we can say, hey, we know that this is really important to people. We're going to prioritize that to really like make sure this can happen. I don't want this necessarily to become a podcast where we're just like stroking our own egos and be like, <laughs> we've done so much good stuff. But I will say, and this is making me feel uh, like proud of some of the work we've done. And it has a lot to do with the listeners and the people who yeah. have connected to us, which is I don't know what month it was, but it, I think it was like somewhere around the middle of the year. And I was, I was like, I was reaching a frustration point that I was voicing to Sati and I was like, God, I just, for as long as we've been doing this, like I feel more disconnected than ever from like what the customers are getting from us. Mm -hmm. You know, like we're putting out content, we're writing training programs. There's a lot of people doing them, you know, we're making podcasts like, and I just, I just feel like it's like a it's just like speaking out into the into a void. Like, what is what do people need from us? What's the next thing that they you know? And and now today, I feel like I've got we've got so much information coming to us. The customer research that you you're talking about and we've alluded to, it's like that was a that was a deep process. That was a a big investment of time and energy. And a third party resource to help us get like, you know, unbiased opinions from our customers or people that have never bought from us or people that just have heard of us. And that was like super valuable. And it's still we haven't even fully utilized all that information yet. We started making a, a, a pretty direct ask. And I'm going to say it right now. Podcast listeners, we need your input. What do you want to hear about? We started asking. And for the last month and a half to two months, I don't think we've addressed a single topic on this podcast that wasn't like generated from a, a customer. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, we launched the persist or functional bodybuilding testing cohort, which happened this year in the last six months where we had now it's a 25 person group who do our training programs six weeks ahead of our group, our large group of customers, and they provide specific feedback on how workouts are impacting them, which then go into refining the programs and, and being implemented for the big group that, I, that goes through it. It's like yep. there are multiple points of uh, feedback that have come through, and that's a big, a huge growth step for us as a company. You know, the hope is that it helps improve our media, our content, our programs and understand like, not just like, was this a good program or a bad program? But like, did you all listening, like have a easy experience getting into it? Yeah. Because that is, we've talked about that so many times, like the program's perfect, but it was hard to start. And so I never did it. You know, I was, I never got into the consistency of doing it. The program was so perfect, but like something was in the way of me doing it. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's actually not a good program because you're just not actually getting any of the benefit. Yeah. And that was like, I mean, you push back all the time now. It's like, yeah, okay, cool idea, everybody. But how is this actually like addressing the problem? Like, yes, that's a better solution for a training program. But if somebody doesn't open the app and doesn't like what they see, you know, from a color palette perspective, guess what? They're going to close the app and they're going to just do whatever. And that's super important. So this is just to say, like, I'm proud of the work that we've done to move in the right direction for like, how can we actually get valuable feedback and then implement? But two, to just say like, hey, we are here to hear what you are all, what you need. And we're not going to stop it just like, well, if Marcus programs like better percentages on the yeah. back squats, like you're going to get stronger. It's like, that's a tiny component of it. And I'm not going to stop trying to improve the programs in that way. But we're also going to look at other things like, is the software platform like, Going from True Coach to Adam isn't making the percentages more accurate. It's making your opportunity to do the program in its com in its entirety with the right intention on a cons more consistent basis with more support from the people inside the community and your and the coaches that we have. Like it's making that part easier. 
That is the intention. Absolutely. I'd love to transition into what we are providing that helps people become more consistent. However, yeah. I need to pee super bad. So I will be right back. Oh, no. this is a first. This is a first. All right. Should I fill the airwaves or should we just shut it down? Fill it. Fill it? You want to keep it rolling? Yeah, that's good. Well, then uh, we're going to transition. I don't even know. Oh, Nate's on, on set. Well, hello, everyone. Okay. I'm not quite dressed like Satya, but hello. It is Hi. me. Okay, Nate. I am very excited about the uh, Adam platform. Give us, give me one to two things that get you excited about it. I love the community aspect of it. The idea of being able to like see what other people are doing and interact with what they're doing. Yeah. Like talk to them give them like a thumbs up like comment on the workouts and like that is like i haven't we haven't obviously delved into it fully yet but yeah that aspect i think is gonna be fun to like kind of create teams or like community For with sure. people like across the country or across the world i think that's gonna be super fun yeah i'm, I'm feeling a little fomo on that because i do the workouts like usually like a couple months in advance of when they actually roll out. So I might have to like double down yeah. and come back. And, but the feature is essentially like, you know, on a daily basis, there will be a place for you to, in, you know, place a result that kind of is, a com uh, goes onto the community board. And then you can also just like, you know, you can tap on a, on a profile and see, Hey, what's this person doing now? Not everything will be public, right? Like yeah. if you want to keep your, back squat numbers to yourself there's a place to keep it private and then there's a place to keep it public so I, there's yeah i think cool. another feature that really blows my mind and i don't know how much i'm allowed to share but is like being able to choose your level within totally, the yeah. workout or yep. like from one to four changing like yes set to set even yes so, the real co-host is back everyone Nate, enjoy the show no you're, you're <laughs> it's well nate just just dropped two things that he's really excited about about Thanks, the Nate. adam platform but I'll just follow up on what you just finished saying, which is, yes, there's like this feature set that's going to allow us to um, basically like, hey, I'm a level one or level three or level four athlete. You know, we can have different levels and the level just talks about where you're at in your fitness journey now. But if you know you're a level three athlete then you probably don't want to see like a muscle up and a rope climb and a 175 mm -hmm. pound snatch. Like you want to see the skills and the weights that are more aligned with where you're at today and what's going to move you forward. And so as we develop this more and we have these, uh, you know, we understand how the platform really operates. We're going to be able to dive into that a lot and create, you know, very customized levels for, for clients. We're already starting to do it with certain skills, but that can only evolve from there. And I mean, won't it be cool to like, you know, click the button and be like, I don't have to worry about scaling. It's like, it's already ready for me. Yeah. And that was one of the things that we had a lot of feedback around was I'm not sure how to approach choosing weights or I'm not sure how to approach scaling and we can provide guidance for that. But it also goes to an emotional thing that happens for the athlete in the program, because when you are constantly hitting up against a program that's too advanced for your level, it's so discouraging. And oh, you yeah. feel like, Oh, this sucks. Like I'm just every day being reminded of how much better that I need to get to even be at like this base level that this program is talking about. Totally. It, it happens at every level of fitness. I promise you, like there was, you know, personal anecdote was um, in my post retirement sort of like attempt to like come back to, to competing with, um, when, when Sam Smith was coaching me uh -huh. and I was like going to make a run at masters, um, there was like a phase where like I was, he was, I was like, we we're building into some like kind of, I think it was like the open coming up. I, I don't know. There was some testing period where he started giving me these workouts and I was like, shit, like I can't, I can't finish it. Like <laughs> it was like a, like an EMOM uh -huh. with like a certain number of reps and things to do. And I was like, I'm not capable of this. Like. And th I'm not going to say that's what got me to like pull the, pull the eject button mm -hmm. or the, you know, the, the rip cord. But I was like, pr I was sufficiently discouraged where I was like, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Like maybe I should, maybe I should just bow out and yeah, I'm going to bow out. I'm, I'm done. I'm retired, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And, um, so yes, it, it certainly happens across all, all levels of fitness. And that is something that I don't, you know, I've actually brought because of this feature, that we're going to be able to explore 
I've been thinking about it a lot more when I'm writing programs mm-hmm. for the for the customers. I'm like, oh yeah, 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 like this is, you know, I can see how this workout really fits for a particular level of athlete, but like for a different level, it's it's not going to feel that good. And back to the the feedback group, the testing group, I've gotten some really interesting feedback from like certain athletes who was like, hey, you know, I'm six foot four and I, you know, I I weigh this much, like. You know, doing a side plank for that long is crushes me. I'm Hmm. like, oh, gosh, you know, like just thinking about. That's great to know. Yeah. Different. So anyway, this is uh, didn't mean to steal this, steal this show from what you were saying. No, that's that's all right. Well, the other thing that I'm really excited about is to bring more of a community aspect to Mm -hmm. functional bodybuilding, because one of the things that we used to do in the program was have a few people who were testing yourself or whoever the other testers were sometimes. Lauren. Shout out to Lauren. Shout out to Lauren. Cliff. Cliff. Shout out to Cliff. Everyone was chasing Cliff and Pump for a while there. (laughs) And um, yeah, people would put their times in. So it's like, okay, Lauren got, you know, 20 whatever minutes on this thing and she Mm -hmm. used this weight. And so it just gives you a little bit of guidance to be like, okay, I know that this is kind of what Lauren does and, and so I can mark my own time around that. Yeah. And now we're going to have the ability to actually highlight athletes so and not just the top level athletes like yeah. all kinds of athletes so right. that you can see like okay this person's a level one this person's a level three here's kind of the time that they got totally and you can go and filter the community board by different uh, aspects of people's you know demographics and things like that yep. so you can just sort of see where you might not necessarily have to like compete with someone, but oh, this helps me understand if how I'm doing or if I'm kind of generally in the ballpark for this. Yeah. This was the first bathroom break topic that Nate commented on. And oh, so thanks, Nate. Nate was excited about it, but you brought up some other in- really important points to talk about, which is like it's a place to like engage with people. Um, and really, I think what we're trying to do. <laughs> Maybe this is the theme for functional bodybuilding. How can we take the best of CrossFit and leave out the parts that like (laughs) we don't, you know? Yeah. And again, like if y'all have listened for a while, you know that we're fans of of the CrossFitting and I love it still to this day. And there were some things that in a, in a certain group of people didn't work, you know? And, but if, so where am I going with that? Look at the CrossFit open. I mean, it's one of the most engaging times of year mm-hmm. for CrossFit athletes. Why? Because there's a freaking leaderboard where you can filter but based upon who you, you know. And I know that that's more about winning points and being the best and competing, right? Which is not necessarily what the day-to-day is supposed to be about in functional mm-hmm. bodybuilding. We're not competing and we're not like, hey, what did so-and-so get? But there, there's no denying that there's a little, I mean, when you're ready and you want to engage in that, there's a there's a there's an accountability there's a a performance boost that can come from that yeah. and there's just generally like so many years and so many co- like clients it's like oh i saw like i saw steve got like seven rounds on that like i'm as good as steve like mm-hmm. i could probably i can do that you know but left to their own devices they might have just gotten five rounds mm-hmm. like it's just, a, it's like, oh, I know where I sit in this. Oh, I know where like just above where I sit is, or I know where just below, is, mm-hmm. you know, it's the same like phenomenon that you see on Peloton. Like I've, I played around on the Peloton app or the Peloton bike, you know, you see like, oh, there's, you stuck there's yeah, you know, you're 550th place out of 10,000 on <laughs> this ride. Like, I'm like, oh, da- oh, I see Jesse jesse no face from you know brooklyn like and let me try and catch jesse you know and um yeah and and i think we're going to be in a great position to like teach people how to use that to their advantage and to avoid some of the pitfalls of just like which was a pitfall i fell into with peloton i'll just be you know completely transparent here i was like biking twice a week and then i was like oh i'm gonna throw in a peloton once or twice a week and like after a month i was like i'm done on the peloton like i have maxed out like i'm i'm trying to pr and win every day and i'm like this is hurting you know like i don't even know how to you know i just couldn't take my knowledge of fitness and bring it to that platform very well so i was there was a pitfall there for me where i was just pushing too hard yeah um but as we've talked about previous podcasts like most people aren't pushing too hard. They're just not pushing enough. And so we need to kind of teach people how to use these features. But yeah, this is 
this is exciting for sure. Yeah. And that brings me to the next point, which is that one thing that really came out of our digging into what motivates people and what helps them become more consistent with their training and enjoy it more is to really see their sense of progress over time and there are other apps and ways to do this in training, of course. You know, you can chart your PRs on whatever lift. But in the nature that we do this with functional bodybuilding is a little bit different because you might not necessarily be moving up in weight. You might be moving up in the quality or the number of reps that you get within a rep range or the number of sets that you're doing that day. And so we are going to be working on bringing more and more ways for people to really see visible elements within the training program of, Mm -hmm. oh, this is what I did last week. Okay, great. I know that I can add just a couple more reps in this set and I feel like I'm moving forward in the progression Mm -hmm. so that I feel connected to what I've done, what's ahead, how I'm doing in that, and that it's more of a journey rather than, oh, I just, you know, caught Jesse on the Peloton workout for today. Yeah. Um, One of... (laughs) something I'm just taking away right now is like, okay, there are, I'm, I'm, I'm just, there are options. There are possibilities here. All, all of which if done correctly and, you know, delivered in the best way, increase your likelihood of being consistent and therefore having kind of that long-term success. And I think that's special. There's community, there's tracking features there's the ability to adjust levels. There's ability to, you know, have more training options that you can easily navigate through without getting lost on a map where there's too much information. I mean, there's just better video, you know, uh, capabilities so that we can get you better content media that you don't have to like go to YouTube to watch. You can just watch right there. And all these things that are designed to it help people be more consistent and it's 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 also cool because you got to have like you got to have multiple tools yeah. in the tool bank to get to 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 stay in the game. Yeah. Lately, and I would say lately in the last 6 to maybe 12 months, there has been a very and maybe this is just the the algorithm working on me, but there's a very heavy influence on social media and a heavy like kind of theme of there's a right way to train. Mm-hmm. There's the, there's these movements that are the best. Mm-hmm. You've got to train to this effort. And if you, and if you're doing anything other than that, like it's just wrong. Stop, yeah. like stop doing lat pull downs. Cause that's not a lat exercise. That's an upper back exercise. That's more of a rhomboid pull down. I'm like, okay, that's important to know. Like, and then don't train like this because it's not making your hamstring stronger. Train it this way. You got to do a seated, not a prone hamstring curl because that's better by the book. Like blah, blah, blah. Okay. And then rep range. You got to do this. Rep. I'm like, suddenly there are a list of rules in training and then a way to track progressive overload. And if you miss your progressive overload, then don't even bother coming to the gym. It's like, it's there's just been this like force fed, like this is how you do it. All the other stuff doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, that's valuable. And what if that's not the thing that gets you fired up? Mm -hmm. (laughs) What else is going to keep you consistent? Cause like, I'm tired of hearing that this version of the squat is not the best for muscle mass and strength gains. Like, only do it this way. That's the best way. Or only do this type of back exercise. Like, why are you pulling with wide wide hands? You should only be pulling with narrow hands because that's what Dorian Yates did to build the biggest back of all time. It's like, I'm just, it just frustrates me that people are getting narrowly focused. And I, what I'm hearing just today in this conversation is like, we're trying to broaden all the ways that we can reach people so that we can have like, we're going to have people that love the community board. And we're going to have people that don't care about it. Yeah. And that's good. Yeah. We got something else for you that you right. care a lot about. Right. So anyway, that I think that is another episode topic altogether that we could really go down the rabbit hole of. Yeah. Because I'm, I got to unfollow some, some, <laughs> you got to unfollow some, some people. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about my language. I got to unfollow those people. Yeah. They're really driving me nuts. Yeah. Well, I think to sum up our, 
move to a new training platform is all in the service of helping people have a more consistent and a more enjoyable training experience. And ultimately what that leads to is more confidence, which is our theme for 2023, essentially, Yeah. which just how do you feel like you're confident in what your body can do, what your body looks like? Mm -hmm. You get that through being consistent with your training knowing that there's something great for you every time you open that up that you can experience that day and the next week and you don't feel discouraged and you feel really motivated and strong and and understand how you're progressing. And so all of those things lead to a really good feeling in training, which we hope everyone will take part in. Heck yeah. And, And the pursuit of confidence in yourself and your ability to achieve the feeling and the fitness and the body and all the things that you want it's a very, very like worthwhile and like noble pursuit. I, I can say I'm not the fittest I've ever been in my life. You know, I'm not the, I don't have the best body I've ever had in my life. I don't have the best whatever, but I do feel the most confident in myself and like how I can go and achieve the things that I want to achieve. You know, I'm, demystifying fitness more and more every year that I'm doing it. Um, and I'm also recognizing the realities of how lifestyle and in engagement with training, like impacts my ability. Like, and with that understanding, I'm just like, okay, I'm confident that like, if I want to do something, I know what it takes. Yeah. And I either get to make the choice to do it or say, Hey, you know what? that's going to be way too hard. Let me pick something that's like more realistic for my life Mm -hmm. and let me go for it. And I want that to be what we, you know, share with everybody and help move them closer toward towards in, in the next year and in years, many years to come. Absolutely. So if you want to be a confident fitness, functional bodybuilder, stay tuned. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All right. All right. Well, we are going to be opening registration for the new training platform on December 26th. So if you're listening to this, it's going to be most likely a few days away, but um, head to our website at functional-bodybuilding.com. Our new training cycle begins on Monday, January 2nd. Sweet. See you all there. Yeah.